Quinn is my name. I've been working for 25 years. Six months ago, my grandfather, who reared me, passed away. The lawyer is going to open my grandfather's will today. For this reason, my four-year-old sister Audrey and I were at my grandfather's house. Audrey is the lone member of my family. Our grandparents have been raising us since our parents died in an accident 20 years ago. My grandfather's health has been deteriorating yearly since my grandma passed away a few years ago from an illness, and he has been sick more often. I lived in an apartment close to my grandfather's house and would frequently visit him out of concern. You've developed into a lady. To constantly going back home is unworthy. That's what my grandfather would say, but he would always laugh heartily. Then, one day, I went to visit as usual and discovered my grandfather at the door, lying in anguish. I frantically dialed for help, but my grandfather suddenly passed away. Hey, for what reason are you daydreaming? Make some tea at the very least. The words of my sister jolted me back to the present. Yes, the attorney will arrive shortly. After answering, I went to the kitchen. I glanced over and noticed my sister yawning and languidly spreading her legs across the carpet. Even a short distance away in the kitchen, I could still smell my sister's potent perfume, so I pulled the face. She remains unchanged. I muttered to myself as I put the kettle on the burner. My sister has always been the kind to put her own needs first. She began coloring her hair as if it were natural as soon as she turned into a teenager. She was constantly on the go and hung around with the so-called miscreants. It was inevitable to demand money without taking a part-time job. She seemed unfazed even when she made trouble and our grandparents had to apologize on her behalf. Being the reserved one, I frequently had to handle the consequences. Even as an adult, she doesn't seem to have changed all that much. She appears to be circling around while working part-time and lacks a steady employment. I was aware that when I was not present, she had been begging our grandfather for money. If not for the inheritance, it was easy to believe that she would have considered this to be far too bothersome. You have to be the attorney. I appreciate you being here today. My sister's formal, high-pitched voice alerted me to the arrival of the lawyer. I quickly added tea leaves to the teapot and made my way to the door. I appreciate you being here today. The lawyer and I had met the funeral. He had the same gentle gaze as my grandfather. On his chest glistened a dazzling lawyer's badge. He lit incense before my grandfather's picture, sipped some of the tea I offered, and then removed my grandfather's will. My grandfather gave it to him when he was still living. The following was the content. As the younger daughter, I was to inherit this property and the land it stands on, while my older sister Audrey was to inherit $20 million in cash. My sister, hearing this, started giggling hysterically. For the older daughter, $20 million in cash, and for the younger, just an old house? What fun, for someone as straightforward as you, it's ideal. There is more to it than just the house, there is the land. I shot back, and my sister gave me a sarcastic laugh. It is not unexpected that this land has such worth in such a desolate location. Cash would have been preferable. After all, I suppose Grandpa had a warm spot for me. It's true that I'm a little taken aback. My grandfather lived his entire life with my grandmother. Therefore, I guess he wanted me to look out for his cherished home and property. A home and some land. Isn't it pretty awesome? My partner, Matthew, gasped in shock when he heard my tale. I implied that it's not as good as it sounds by shaking my head. Not really. Cash worth $20 million was left to my sister. That is more remarkable. Speaking it out, I experienced a feeling of emptiness. I was being humble that saying it out loud felt like a recognition. Whoa, that's gorgeous. And now on money, the moors are in her, the superior triumph. I gave Matthew a quick sidelong glare for his hurtful remark. He laughed, realizing his mistake. Quinn, your comfort is more important to me than money. My partner since I began working has been Matthew. Being the same age, we hit it off right away when we first met at a social gathering. My sister and granddad have both met him. I've been thinking about getting married, even though he hasn't proposed yet. Our first date of the year was today, and I finally told Matthew about my inheritance. It was, I think, because I assumed that one day he would marry me. I never realized how much I would regret doing this. A few days later, I was going to the house my grandfather had left us. My plan was to tidy and organize my grandfather's possessions. The house was small, but the property was huge. I reasoned that I could handle it by myself. I scanned the house and considered. Since my job is nearby, I might as well relocate here. Having a cat and living here comfortably doesn't sound too horrible. There would be no rent to pay, and even if degradation may require maintenance, that shouldn't be an issue because I've been saving a lot and working hard. 
perhaps with Matthew at some point in the future. I gave that idea a sharp shake of my head, mortified. I put up my sleeves and got to work cleaning. That's when I got a call. The name of my sister showed up on my phone. What's up, sis? Quinn, hello. Enjoying yourself to yourself in that ancient home. My sister appeared to be intoxicated. She always had a special way of saying things. But tonight, it was really awful. You're drinking, sis, isn't that right? It's still the afternoon. She responded with an exaggerated sigh when I pointed out. You really are such a misguide two shoes. She had indeed been drinking, I was right. I had considered relocating here in the future. In an attempt to cut the talk short, I responded to my sister's query. Really? I'm currently relaxing in a suite at an opulent hotel. My sister's voice was raised, perhaps a little too high. You know who I am currently with? I'm not sure. Dull Matthew will not like you if you have that attitude. How come? Quinn, I apologize. When Matthew's voice filled the line, I was shocked. Matthew's abrupt involvement knocked me off balance. I started to have dizzying questions in my thoughts. However, I disliked my imagination. I had finished a horrible fantasy in my mind at this point. My sister's mean-spirited voice surprised her and added something. I felt Matthew was a real catch ever since you introduced him to me. She boastfully babbled on about how she had been drawn to Matthew ever since I introduced them, how I had found out where he worked, and how she had gone up to him as soon as he got off work. When she requested, he quickly obliged. She was hundreds of times more beautiful than me, he told her. I was silent in shock as I listened. Quinn, I apologize sincerely. Matthew's voice was the next one I heard. Tell me that was an error. He started talking again as I struggled to find the right things to say. I had to seize this chance as a man. How come? I apologize for that, but really, how can you resist a stunning woman with $20 million? Correct. Correct. His tone, as though he were trying to get me to understand, made me feel nothing. I experienced a chill, as if my blood were being extracted from me. What do you know? You're not the kind of man I need. I could hear my sister giggling hysterically in the background at what I had just said. My sister's voice came back over the phone. That being said, let's stop thinking of ourselves as sisters going forward. You shouldn't come to me just because you're poor, in my opinion. She hung up the phone with those remarks. Emotions that had fallen behind so far that all I could do was cry out. It has been five years since then. My laptop was open, and there was a sleeping cat on my lap. The cat was sleeping soundly, too, purring. Even though I have the day off today, I still have some work to do from what I brought home. Oh no, this will not complete the task. I had to get the cat off my lap even though I felt bad about it. My phone began to ring as soon as I extended my hand. My smartphone was displaying an unknown number. Taking the call without raising any warning flags, I assumed it might be work-related. Hi there? Quinn. It's been a long time. I froze, knowing instinctively who it was. There was no mistaking my sister's distinct voice. Quinn, it's you, aren't it? Just from your first hello, I can tell. I am, after all, your older sister. After five years, Audrey should have been 34. A small smile appeared at the corner of my mouth due to her constant manner of speaking. You remain unchanged. I noticed a motel standing when I got home. Have you sold the residence? That is not relevant to you. Oh, please, hurry up. It's a rather fancy hotel. You must have spent a significant amount of money. I was ready to hang up the phone, getting tired of her, when she began to babble about her present circumstances. Audrey said that she had spent the fortune in less than two years. She even had a sizable debt at this point. She's still hanging about with Matthew, but even he seems to be drowning in debt. I was unable to speak. Sincerely, I don't give a damn, so please lend me some cash. I calmly replied, I've always wondered why Grandpa distributed his estate that way, in response to Audrey's ranting. On the day you took Matthew from me and cut ties, I understood. I spoke slowly at first. I was devastated when Matthew ended our relationship five years ago. I sobbed uncontrollably and then sat in my room, staring into nothingness. What an idiot I am. I started crying again as I whispered this. My eyes landed on a painting I had done when I was younger and given to my grandfather. He had hung it with affection after framing it. Unsteadily getting up, I grabbed the artwork. Uncle. When the emotions of longing and isolation surfaced, tears began to flow. Something dropped out of the rear of the picture, I thought. As I picked it up, I discovered it was a brand new notepad that was addressed to me. I thought back to the times when I used to write notes to my grandfather on the back of this frame and send him covered messages. Really, it was akin to a family journal. He undoubtedly assumed that I would find this note, knowing that I would inherit the house. Unhappy I noticed, unhappy I noticed. 
The idea that I might have overlooked it, giving Quen no notice, made me tremble. The letter's date coincided with my grandfather's imminent death. I was certain you would see this letter. You're probably asking yourself why I divided my estate this way right now. Your sister gets money, and you get an ancient house and land. Although it could appear that I preferred Audrey, that is untrue. I wanted to leave you the majority of my estate, regardless of any accusations of favoritism, who gave me their undying care. I suddenly realized what had been nagging at me. Grandpa loved me more than anything else, and I'm sure Audrey's remarks at the time caused me great pain. I read the letter through a sort of envy even though I loved my grandfather more. However, Audrey would not be content with a standard divide. I have to admit, even as her granddad, this youngster is incredibly avaricious. Yes, Grandpa, even my boyfriend was taken from me by her. In my heart, I want to tell him that. I put things in this order for that reason. Audrey won't pay attention to your share if it looks like she got the better deal at first. Grandfather's letter states that as long as urban growth continues, this land's worth in our community will rise. Although this land isn't currently worth Audrey's $20 million, its value will undoubtedly rise in the future. My eyes widened with amazement at what I had read thus far. If you feel a strong connection to this place, you can live here. Otherwise, you can sell it when its value increases to a decent profit. I just want the best for you. After I had completed explaining the letter's contents, Audrey clicked her tongue and exclaimed, Adult hag. After living there for a while, I made the decision to sell the house in accordance with grandfather's letter after my marriage was finalized. The land had appreciated sufficiently. In any case, I will never give you a loan. Audrey answered, yeah, if you want, I can give Matthew back to you, with a look of frustration hiding beneath her intelligent expression. Thus, assist your sister. Isn't it a good deal? I felt something inside of me crack at this very moment. It's enough. Grandpa has taken care of you, but you haven't expressed even the slightest appreciation. You are no longer my sister, and I hate you for it because I am already married. Matthew is not necessary, and I am not even interested in seeing his face. Go from my life permanently. I finished my sentence and hung up. My cat was hiding on the bed on my lap as I hastily set up call blocking. I apologized as soon as I scooped up my cat. Following that, it appears Audrey got in touch with Matthew, and the two of them barged into our former home. Did they attempt to give Matthew back to me? Though I sold the land and had nothing to do with it, there's a respectable in there now, so I guess they mistook something and were shouting that they were my relatives. It's easy for the two of them. After I sold the land, an inn was constructed. I have to be the inn's owner equals. Naturally, the employees informed the police. Due to their destruction of multiple goods in the inn, the two of them were placed under arrest. It was also found that they had previously committed marriage fraud for financial gain. It appears that they will be incarcerated together. The police also questioned me, but I was soon able to show that I had no participation because we were no longer together, so I was let go. I heard shouting as my husband, who had come to pick me up, and I were passing through the station and looked around. And then there were Audrey and Matthew, who had entirely different appearances. Luckily, they were unaware of us. They both looked nothing like the two people I recall, and they both had disheveled hair and ratty clothes. Particularly Audrey, who never skipped cosmetics, appeared much more dissimilar. Most likely they were being relocated to another area. My husband and I locked eyes as I observed the two of them, feeling a sense of melancholy. We walked out of the police station after I took his hand. Are things going well for you? My husband gave me a soft gaze, always worried. I'm doing fine. I have this tiny one in you. I grinned back in my belly and caressed my hardly perceptible belly. Although money is vital, there's something even more valuable that our new family member is growing with my spouse by my side. That's what I want to instill in our child.